Hello and welcome to The Daily Oz. Nandini is back on the pod today to talk us through a really interesting topic, 3D printing, 3D printed housing to be specific. Exactly. I mean, if you can't afford a home, why don't you 3D print one? 3D printing technology is advancing rapidly and it means that houses can be built faster, cheaper and more sustainably, which got me thinking, could 3D printing be the solution to Australia's housing crisis? We'll tell you all about how this works, where it's being done and what it means for Australia in the deep dive. Nandini, we're chatting about 3D printed housing today, and this all stemmed from a bit of a deep dive that we ended up kind of spiraling into from some news that we saw out of the US, where a company is nearly finished building an entire neighborhood of 3D printed houses in Texas. That's right, 100 houses to be exact, which got me thinking about how 3D printing could be used for social housing. First of all, I wanted to understand more about how it works, but also the broader impacts it could have on constructions sustainability, housing and costs. Okay, before we dive into some of those bigger picture ideas, how does 3D printing actually work when we're talking about housing? Like I'm kind of imagining an old school printer that I would like print off like coloured pictures of like actors from Twilight at home and then get yelled at because I used too much ink. But this is a very different kind of technology, right? Yeah. So if you've seen a 3D printer, you'll know what it looks like and just imagine that on a massive scale, kind of like these massive cranes that go over the foundations of a home and essentially 3D prints the house. And it's used to print the walls of a home by piping out concrete mixture and it forms these structures kind of looks like icing and this is often done at a building site and then once those walls are up the roof is added in separately. There's obviously a pretty major project underway in Texas as mentioned but is 3D printing being used for housing on a scale like that anywhere else? Well, there's been an uptick in 3D printed dwellings globally. Some parts of the world have actually jumped onto this idea quite a while ago, like Dubai. Back in 2016, their government announced plans for 25% of all buildings to be 3D printed by 2030. That is a big plan. Is this something that's also happening in Australia? Are there any kind of major 3D printed housing projects that we know of? Well, at first I hadn't heard too much about 3D printed housing in Australia until last week where the New South Wales government announced Australia's first social and affordable 3D printed housing project. Construction is set to begin next month to build homes for tenants through the New South Wales government's Aboriginal Housing Office. Dubbo was chosen as the site for the pilot project because they had a large demand for social housing in the regional centre. So that's Dubbo in central western New South Wales. Yeah. Now, often big housing plans, especially when we're talking about social housing projects that are government-led, come with really big timeframes. Do we know how long this is going to take? This is the amazing thing about 3D printing to me because this project is expected to be completed in a 16-week time frame and to give a gauge for that according to the New South Wales government it would otherwise take 40 weeks if this social housing project was being built using quote-unquote traditional methods and this is actually one of the big reasons people are so excited about 3D printed homes like myself. (laughs) I sat down with Brad Draper he's the managing director at Aboriginal Sustainable Homes and that's the organization that's working with the state government on this project. So here's what he told me about the benefits of 3D printing in construction. We can get the shell of a house up within 24 to 72 hours, depending on the complexity of the design. Now that's just the walls. Now obviously then you have to put your roof on the like as well. So you know, two days, so that means we can do roughly 180 houses per year with one printer. Now if we were to scale that up, to you know, 50 printers or 100 printers or more, you're building 18,000 houses a year. So we're talking about a government announcement, though, this social housing project for Dubbo. So has the opposition had anything to say about the plan? So I reached out to the New South Wales Shadow Minister for Planning, Scott Farlow, and he told TDA that, quote, the coalition welcomes new innovations and alternative construction methods to help alleviate the housing crisis. However, he did warn that the state government will be judged on the delivery of new housing. We are, of course, in the midst of a housing crisis, a cost of living crisis. So I imagine maybe that's what Farlow is kind of referring to when he says that people will be watching the government closely on this. 
We know that 3D printing technology can build homes quickly, but what do we know about it in the context of kind of those broader social issues? So I talked to Brad Draper from Aboriginal Sustainable Homes about this topic and he said that the construction industry needs to rethink its current strategies to one, address the housing supply shortage that you've mentioned, but two, to address a skills shortage in the industry. If we continue to do what we're doing at the moment and not changing the technology and sticking with traditional builds of sticks and bricks, as I call, then we're going to be held to ransom by the shortage of trades within Australia at the moment. So there's been this shift to 3D printing because it's this time and cost effective way of constructing homes, but there's also a sustainability aspect to it, isn't there? Yes. So 3D printed homes are actually a lot more energy efficient, especially when it comes to the construction process, because it produces less waste than traditional builds. Brad Draper said that the social housing project in Dubbo will create homes using a mixture that's two and a half times stronger than concrete. He said this reduces long term maintenance costs, which he called, quote, the biggest problem within social and affordable housing. So we're talking about structures that are really built to last but it isn't a perfect process just yet. What can you tell us about that? So that mixture that I was talking about, which is twice as strong as concrete, it consists of 50% concrete and 50% fly ash. Now, fly ash is a waste that's created by coal-fired power stations. So this mixture basically repurposes this waste to create material for 3D printed homes. But while this material is really durable, it ultimately comes from a non-sustainable practice. Senior UNSW lecturer Ali Kashani told me that researchers are looking into what other materials can be used to reduce carbon emissions without compromising the strength of a home. Kashani also noted that, quote, in terms of bushfires, 3D printed homes are going to be more resistant compared to wood-based products. So there is a current skills shortage that is being faced by the construction industry. We've heard a bit about it in the news. We've spoken about it at the Daily Oz before, this sort of labour shortage. Is this kind of 3D printing technology a threat to the construction industry or is it something that could actually support it? So I spoke to an industry expert and it seems like the sector is broadly supportive of innovative construction solutions. The chief executive of the Housing Industry Association, Simon Croft, told TDA that 3D printing could offer greater efficiencies and he doesn't see it replacing current jobs, but rather, quote, working alongside them. He said that 3D printing technology would support growth in areas of construction, including social and community housing and emergency accommodation. Okay, so to recap, we've got support from social housing advocates, governments, researchers and the building industry. Where to next? What do we know about the future of 3D printed homes? Well, one emerging component of this technology that came up in my discussions with a bunch of different people was prefabrication. So think of it as an IKEA flat pack. Prefabrication involves building parts of a home with a 3D printer in a warehouse. Those parts are then transported to the location and pieced together at the venue. This can include roofs and stairs, and there's some excitement about what this could mean for the mass production of homes as well as the affordability component. So like we're talking about a ready-to-install flat pack home kit. Exactly. And one other thing I wanted to mention that Ali Kashani from UNSW told me about was design. And he talked about how architects actually love working on 3D printed homes because of the design possibilities that it provides. If you look up pictures and footage of the process, you'll see what I mean. But 3D printed homes just look so futuristic. You see these curved walls and bumpy textures on the walls and the way that the concrete mixture is piped out creates a really beautiful design. Yeah, I was really surprised. Some of these homes look like high-end luxury architecture and it sounds like that could soon become the norm. So I look forward to our beautiful luxury high-end homes, Nandini. It sounds like this is only the beginning for 3D printing in construction though. So thank you so much for taking us through such an interesting topic. Of course, I never thought I could get so excited about concrete. (laughs) You and me both. Nandini has produced a really interesting video carousel on this topic as well. So if you want to hear more from the experts mentioned throughout the podcast, and if you want to get a better understanding of what it all looks 
looks like and check out how cool they look for yourselves, we will pop a link to that in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening to The Daily Oz. If you enjoyed today's episode, please share it with a friend. Don't forget to follow or subscribe wherever you listen or if you're watching us on YouTube. We will be back with another episode tomorrow. Until then, have a great day. 